welcome, welcome, welcome. Congratulations to all of you who have made it this far in the semester. This is the halfway point. We've made it to lesson 16 review. This is the review for all 16 units that have come through our book, Speak Now To. So this is GBS Beginner English. This is the review for all the, the last four units of our book before the midterm test. So get ready. We're going to do a quick review to make sure that you've got at least a general idea of what's in this book and what you need to do for your homework. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. Now, today, we listened to Casey going out and looking for a job. Now, this is something that everybody goes through several times, probably in their lifetime. It's very rare that you get to go on one job interview and never go on another one. We will, in class, after the midterm test, we're going to do some mock interviews. Don't worry. It's going to be easy. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. But we're going to find out what you think about her interview and what she's doing. She goes to the store and wants to find out a little bit about the, the um, job there. Now, a couple of things you can do when you are getting ready to do a job interview, be sure you find out information about the company that you're going to interview because that is very, very important. Knowing what you're going to do and what kind of job you're going to do are very important so that when you do take the job, you can say, ah, this is what I want. Also, Here's something that's a, a pro tip is to know what your time is worth. Now, everybody has different amounts that they work for for different hours. What you have to do is find out what your working rate is. What is your time worth? And look for a job that's going to pay you something for your time. Now, how do you know how much your time is worth? Well, that comes with experience. The more experience that you have and the more skills that you can bring to the interview table, the higher you can ask for money. You may be able to start higher than the base salary that they want to start. All you can do is ask. Do not be afraid to ever ask. So let's listen as Casey does her job interview. Hi guys. I heard you might be going to Australia, Casey. Yep. I'm looking for a part-time job to save up. Maria is helping me. This company is looking for a translator. I don't speak any other languages. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend the job then. <laughs> this coffee shop is looking for a server. Why not here? I would have to deal with angry people. I also would have to work late at night. Then I couldn't enjoy my stay here. And tips aren't steady. Yes, that is true, too. What about this? A fashion company is looking for a part-time assistant. And they need someone to start right away. That sounds perfect. You should call them. OK. Fashion Inc. Hi. Could I speak to the manager? This is the manager. My name is Casey. I was wondering if the part-time assistant position was still available. Yes, we haven't filled it yet. What sort of position is it? You would be helping around the office. What are the hours? Four times a week, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That sounds perfect. Why don't you come in for an interview? Great! <laughs> Hello. I'm here for the interview for the part-time assistant position. Can I speak to the manager? Yes, you can. Great. What's your name? My name is Casey. Oh, Casey, yes. It's great to meet you. I just want to tell you, I can write pretty well. I have a fashion blog. I'm also really good with people. And as you can see, I'm good at fashion. Sounds good. I'm also reliable and a hard worker. I can do a really good job. Sounds like you'd be a great assistant. Really? When can I start? Oh, I don't know. You have to interview first. This isn't the interview? No. Let me call the manager. Hi, Ben. This is Mike from downstairs. Casey is here to see you.
Okay, so she started doing her interview with just a random employee, and that was kind of rude of him that he didn't clarify who he was. But then again, she did not ask. She did, she said, "May I speak to the manager?" And he's said she should have asked the follow up. Am I speaking to the manager now? Because asking the question couldn't hurt, and she just saved herself maybe a little bit of embarrassment, but it also gives her a chance to say a few things and practice beforehand. Now, she says, I will work really hard and do my best and I will work a great job. These are kind of cliche. Cliche means they're being used and used and used. My boss always used to say, don't tell me what you can do, show me what you can do. And it's always best to present yourself and say and do your best. Now, when you're doing a job interview, we'll talk about this more after your midterm test, but you have to sell you. You have to sell I and what you want. When you can sell yourself to them, they're going to want to hire you. And be sure that when you do apply for jobs, when you do make those applications and interviews, don't exaggerate your skills. If you can't do something, be sure to say, I'm sorry, sir, I do not know how to do that, but I'm a fast learner and I am willing to learn how to do that. If you would like to show me how, I'd be glad to do it. This will show your willingness to improve and get more skilled. Also, once you get a job, don't stop learning. I've been a teacher now for 18 years, almost 19. As I've been teaching every year i'm still learning new things to do to make better my teaching my videos i'm always learning something new that's what you have to do you cannot stop learning practice that work on doing that so that when you do have those skills oh yeah i know how to do that that's easy boom, 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 boom. i can do it so let's move on go back watch the video again and what type of suggestions do they make what does Tom and Maria, what do they suggest as far as different types of jobs? Then, what are the qualifications that they have? What are the things that they start with? Fill in the blanks for this job interview questionnaire. Now, remember, when you're filling out the information, listen to what they say. If you have your own skills, use them. Cindy? All right. Now, do you think that Casey will be successful with her job? Do you think she's going to go ahead and get that job? Why or why not? She may be able to get that job or she may be told that, nah, you know what? You're not what we're looking for right now. We're looking for something else. Okay, so what are some popular jobs that part-time students do? Now, part-time, as I mentioned in the previous lesson in 16 was a part-time job is a job that doesn't work 40 hours a week. Now, you may work 40 hours a job and still be considered part-time. It's not a matter of the job or the number of hours that you work, but the type of job. Most jobs that college students get are what are considered part-time jobs. Now, you can get different jobs. You can get different qualities. But what kind of jobs are usually available? Think about that and write that down here. And... Do you have a part-time job? If you do, describe your part-time job down below. If you don't have a part-time job, write down what would be your dream part-time job because we all have different part-time jobs that we would like to have. Now, let's review the, the four units real quick. I can write pretty well. Now, this discusses what you can do as a person. What are some of the skills that you have that make you someone we want to hire? Um, are you good at writing? Are you good at describing things? Are you good at making things? Are you good at cleaning? Everyone has skills that they are good at. It's a matter of finding what skills are good for you, what skills you're comfortable doing, and finding a job where you can use those skills. Not everybody wants to work in front of a computer. Not everybody wants to present or talk in front of a big group. These are skills you can either learn or get better at and be able to use them later on. I'd have to. This talks about things that you would 
need to do in order to be able to get the job. It's important to find the things that you can do in life and add to them. I'd have to travel. I would have to go and work here. I'd have to leave my family with jobs, with things come a trade-off. Nothing is perfect. Oh, well, okay. I won't say that nothing is perfect because that means that there's never a perfect thing. There's a small chance that you might find the perfect job, the perfect house, the perfect life, everything perfect. It does happen. It would, it would be, but it's so rare that most of the time it's not something that's going to be uh, available. So what is it that can be, that we can do? We can find what's going to be best for us. Go and find a job or thing that's best for you. You may have cons, uh, cons and pros that go with the job. You may find a great job, but your house is an hour away from the job. You may find a great job, but the pay is not what you want. It's a difference. It's like, what can I accept? Are the pros more than the cons or the cons more than the pros? You have to make that decision for your job and nobody else can do it for you. So be sure to take a very careful look at that. Travel for, re for free. Now this means that some jobs out there have requirements that you have to do. Some jobs require you to go and travel. One of my coworkers used to have to travel to different universities around America, Europe, and Australia, and he would be gone half of the year just traveling to universities presenting about trying to get more students to come to South Korea. And he was very good at his job. This is where, what are you good at? What kind of a job can we get for you to come visit and work for us? What kind of things will you have to do in that job? Will you have to travel? So go find out. Last one, is the manager there? Now this describes getting up and talking to the manager of a group or talking to them about what you can do as far as a job or working there, or even if you have a problem there, talking to the manager is a very good first step. When you're looking for a job interview, talk to the manager, find out what the job requirements are. Then they probably are gonna ask you to fill out an application. One thing that's on an application that you probably are gonna need, especially as you go forward, are references. Now there are personal references, professional references, and you can go out and use these references to help you get a job. Now, before you get a reference, talk to that person. Make sure they're willing to give you a good reference. There are several jobs in my past that I would not ask for a reference from that manager. Not because I didn't do a good job, not because this was not one of the things that I wanted to do, but because for one reason or another, either it's not a job that I want to go back and remember, or it's not a person that I think is going to give me a good reference. It's a matter of, do I want to have my future boss contact this old boss? Sometimes they will, but most of the time on your resume, you file a contact information I worked at this company from this time to this time. Make sure you label the uh, human resources telephone number. All they can do when they call is to verify, hey, did this person work for you for this time to this time? That's mostly what they're going to do. When you give you references, you want people to give you a reference that are going to help you. People that are good to give references. People who've known you for a long time. Not your family. Never. No. Don't ever give your family as a reference. People who've known you for a long time, your neighbors, your uh, people who are close to you, people in your church, your synagogue, people that have known you for a long time. And when I say a long time, try to find someone who's known you for at least five years. It's not as easy for some references, but try to find someone who's known you for at least five years. That means that they're probably going to give you a good reference. So somebody personal, a job that you worked at, Talk to your manager. Make sure that you leave the job that you're working on on good terms. So that when your manager is called for a reference, they can verify, yes, this person was there. Another good reference are your teachers. Now, at the university, 
it's good to have professors that are going to be references for you, especially within your major. But here's the caveat. Caveat means here's the catch. The professor has to know you. And to know you, they're probably going to have to spend time talking to you and know more than just, oh, yes, uh, Kim Jong-un was in this class on this time. Well, what did he do for your class? Um, I don't remember. Mm, that's not what you want as a reference. Make sure that the person that you're getting as a reference knows you. Somebody you've been in their class several times and they know who you are so that when the reference comes up later on, you can be given it to. Another one that you can do for references, this is once you get more professional, you may also ask for your coworkers to give you a reference. It's not as common to get a coworker reference, but for example, I'm a teacher. My boss, who would be the person they're calling to find out about my teaching, may or may not know a lot about my teaching style. My boss may not have watched enough of my classes to really know about my teaching. They may be able to say, oh yes, uh, Jared always comes to work. He always works extra hours. He always does this. He always provides good work. They can look that up on the internet. But a personal a coworker that can do this is somebody who's worked with you on projects, project managers, um, uh, people who are on the same team with you. You may want to ask them for a reference as well. But before you put them on your resume for a reference, Make sure you check with them first. Some people say, no, 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 don't put me as a reference. No, don't put me as a reference. But always ask them first. Moving on. Now, let's talk about the workbook to finish off. Now, first, go back to that video and fill in the missing blanks for this little dialogue between Tom, Casey, Maria, the manager, all of that. Then take a look at time clauses. Now, this is the grammar part for this lesson. Time clauses show when an event happens. When you use when, before, while, or after, this sets up there was a time that this is happening and it wasn't just for one second at one time. No, this is usually for an extended time. When I get home, you may get home at six o'clock, you may get home at eight o'clock, but when I get home, it's a time unknown, but when it happens, it will happen. After, something's going to do but this has to happen first. Before, this, is, this has to happen and then I can do something else. Before I can go out and go have a drink and play games with my friends, I have to finish my work. Okay. While, this is when two things are happening at the same time. While it was raining, I waited uh, next to my motorcycle because I didn't want to ride in the rain. Okay. Or while we had class, it was raining outside. When time clauses come before a main clause, it has a comma after it. So that means you can take the time clauses and you can switch them around in a sentence. But if you put it at the beginning of the sentence, you've got to put a comma in between it. A comma just means that it's been moved out of order. Use before and after to show the sequence. Now, this is go going back to where we talked about signposts using signposts first, second, next, third using before and after are also signposts. But this says, before you do this, be sure you do this. Or after this is done, then you can do this. Be sure to use them because it helps to describe order, especially if the order is very important. Uh, for example, um, use it making dalgona. To make dalgona, you gotta heat the corn syrup, you gotta heat the sugar, and after you've heated it, then you add the baking soda. Well, if you add the baking soda first, it just burns. So this is where you have to be able to say, before you do this, make sure you do this. That way people know to put them in the right order. When we use when, we have actions. When that happens, as soon as, or after this, another action is gonna happen then. And while means the two things are happening at the same time. All right, so then go down here, finish off what you think would best finish this sentence. Circle it and see what is there. Then complete the sentences 
before and after, when or while. Now, there's a couple of them that could use more than one. It just depends on how you want to interpret the sentence. Um, so before you can get a job here, you need to come in for an interview. That's very simple, before. Or uh, you can try, uh, while you wait for your interview, you need to fill out an application for an interview. So this is something where you might change up the sentence to be able to use another one. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're gonna talk about today. And this is all we are doing. We're getting close to the midterm test, don't worry. I will have a video out soon that explains all the steps on how to take the, video, the test. It should be out same time as this video. Until that time, have a great and wonderful day. Study hard, practice, and I'll see you again in class very, very soon. See you later.